you know, my position would certainly be that the radical left has to lead the the, the argument for popular sovereignty and can't uh, fold itself into a, an argument for national sovereignty in itself and, and to play that purely nationalist card without the emphasis on democracy or the emphasis being on democracy as opposed to purely national sovereignty. Um, but I don't think, so this is the hard thing though, I don't think that um, popular sovereignty requires external sovereignty. Um, it requires the form of the of national independence. Fine, fine, fine. But to we clarify. have to. But, no, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. My, the point more is just about what is the the leading point of that, and not to. And I, I think it, it can be seen very clearly with uh, some left wingers who support the Brexit party, um, where that is a fold. You know, you lose the argument and you lose the case about the complete democratic restructuring of the polity if you collapse your radical left argument into a nationalist one no i agree with that and i mean and i think that's the way it's it again like it's a it's a it's a slippery and a difficult argument to make in the context of um the political cut and thrust of the public sphere particularly with all the kind of mania that surrounds brexit but the um the way the european union works isn't so much that it curbs external sovereignty um national sovereignty though i mean it does that too particularly in places like greece after it became a kind of a debt colony. But with countries like Britain, France, Germany, um, Italy to a lesser extent, it's not so much that it curbs external sovereignty, so much that it hollows out the internal processes through which popular power is generated, so that it subverts popular sovereignty. And that has ramifications for how the nation integrates and relates to other countries. But the main, I mean, the main threat of the European Union isn't to national independence, but to popular sovereignty. And I think that's, abs- I mean, I obviously agree. Um, but it's a very, very difficult argument to draw out, particularly because I think uh, um, popular sovereignty requires, obviously, um, external sovereignty and national independence. And that's, it's always, um, it's always a two-dimensional debate at the very least. Yeah, but one thing it doesn't require, and we can be quite straightforward about this, it doesn't require patriotism. It doesn't require, you don't have to, support the england football team it's not about it doesn't have any of these kind of you do cultural... don't you george you do don't you do i yeah of course i do yeah you i mean do, don't you? i i I, I have my garrison not Gateway. to mention like not to mention alex supporting brazil like to the bitter end like well, that's easy. yeah but, but that countries con- yeah but countries are the, it's, 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 yeah it's not like a mega imperialist country so it's you know it's easier but no <laughs> That's so completely untrue, it's, man. It's all, like, it's, what it's, about Haiti? It's sub it's sub-imperialist. I said it's not mega imperialist, oh which is God. a scientific term. 